Have you ever been working with other musicians or even been in the studio? And at the end of the day, when it came to the end of your project, you just weren't happy with the overall results. Something was missing. Whatever was going on in your head wasn't what the end result winded up being. Well, today I'm going to give you five really easy and quick tips that will ensure the next time that you're working with others, that there's a collaboration or you're paying for studio time, you're going to get the results you want. Let's have a think on that. Hello and welcome to the podcast, where we are here to strengthen music careers and communities one song at a time. And now here's your host, Jacob Wing. Yeah. Hey everyone, welcome to today's episode. We have a really great episode that I think is very useful. I keep seeing where this could help a lot of people that I run into work with on a daily basis. So I just want to get this out in the world to help you out. Make sure whatever you do with your next project that involves others that aren't just you can really be the best it can be and you can get the most out of what you're investing to investing into that. And you know, make sure your resources are stretching as far as they possibly can. So I'm not gonna waste any of your time. Just before we get started, thank you so much for everybody that's been watching, who's been listening, uh, who's been supporting, giving us the likes, giving us the subscribes. Thank you so much. If you haven't yet, take a second, give us a subscribe, follow us. We do lots of things for, you know, get you that inspiration, give you that motivation to keep going, insights, interviews with musicians out there doing the job day after day. Follow us. There's a lot of great stuff. So right into it. Number one. And this is the one I want to really, really emphasize. It's number one for a reason. It's the most important. Day after day in the studio, as an engineer, as a person running a business in a studio, I run into people that are trying to find the right person. They're looking around. They're they're weighing their options. And I constantly hear that I've gone to so-and-so studios. I've gone to such and such studio And it just didn't work out. I didn't get the results I wanted. I didn't, you know, get where I needed to be. They didn't quite listen to me. It's just like, I'll hear this story in so many different forms from from people saying that, you know, I I took the time to try to to get this result, to get the best recording I could, but in the end, they, they just weren't listening to me. Or, you know, I'd be saying I want this and then it just wouldn't get across to them. And... Number one here is how to do that. It is how to get the best results easily every time. And it's just be honest and be open from the very beginning, from day one, from the moment you meet whoever it is you're going to work with. And it's usually just a very frank and open conversation of, I am going to hire you. You know, I've chosen you to do my recording with, or you're going to be collaborating with another person, but here's how it's going to work. And if you sit down and you're honest from that very first moment, you have that conversation of not being rude or, or, you know, overpowering, or it's going to be my way or the highway. It's, I'm going to be open and frank about what I say and what I like and what I don't like. I'm going to give reasons behind what that works and what doesn't work, but I'm not going to hold back. And it's not to be mean or to be, you know, rude, but it's going to be time saving. It's also going to get us to the result that's better in the end because we're both happy with the results of what's going on, why we made the choices we made. And I guarantee you, if you say this, if you have this conversation, if they don't have this conversation with you, then, you know, that's what's going to make a break this next project for you. I guarantee it. So if you just take that time, walk into the door and say, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I want. I may not know what it is right now. I may not understand what I want, but in the moment, I'll be able to tell you, I like this. I don't like this. Or through our communications as we're passing files and songs back and forth, you know, I'm just going to be open and say, this works for me. Here's why it works. Here's what this doesn't work we can have that conversation. But the more that you get that dialogue going and you understand that it's not a hostile environment, but it's giving that back and forth that that you can build something off of, I guarantee you your next project, if you take this mindset into it, take this one tip, your next project will be better than anything you've done from this point before. So easily, number one, just come in, 
be honest, throw down your gloves and say, here's what's going to happen from the start and just be open from that moment. If you don't like something, you're paying for this or you're working with somebody and you're investing your time and your resources, just be honest. This isn't working for me. I don't like this. Can we do it again? Can we take this from a different angle? This take isn't working for me. You know, you're not trying to expand the project or try to you know, run the time out longer or do any of that kind of stuff. You're just trying to get to the right sound that you want. And if something's not working, be okay with saying, this doesn't work for me. Can we do a different way? Can we take a different approach to it? Whatever it is to get to that, that's what you have to do. So number one, number two out of our five tips, come in prepared. And this one, it should be really self-explanatory, but going into the studio, going into a project with another person, the more prepared you are when you have everything ready to go so you're not the reason things are being held up, the better things go. And I'll link a video right now. We have a perfect checklist. If you're going into the studio for the first time or the 30th time, it doesn't matter. It's just a quick checklist that you can run through. We give it away for free. It tells you everything you need, I have, what to have in order, what to know about your songs, what to have ready for yourself, uh, you know, as the instrument or with your instruments, whatever it is, how to be prepared. So we'll t tack that on here. It'll be in the show notes. It'll be in. Uh, I'll put a card here if you're watching on YouTube. Use that resource. It's free, but just be ready. When you're going in, don't be the reason that's holding things up. And you're going to get better results from your, your whatever you're doing. The more prepared you are going into it, the better results you get on the back end. And quicker results, is, of course, in this modern economy, like just trying to get your resources to stretch as far as they can. The more prepared you are, the better you are. Number three, trust the process and trust your team. So if you've taken the time to vet out studios, to choose somebody else to collaborate with and you feel like they're going to mesh with you and you're both going to bring something to the table, you're going to get more out of it than if you hadn't worked together, whatever scenario this might be, you need to trust the process after you've made that decision. So you take the time, you've chosen this person, you've listened to their resume. You know, I have clients that come in, I will just link to the work I have. I have over, you know, 70, 80 credits to my name that I can just say, hey, here, here's what I've done, go take a listen. You've had that opportunity, you hear the results, you can come in and at that point, you've hired them, you've hired me, uh, or you've decided to work with somebody. You need to trust what's going on from that point forward instead of being combative instead of saying you know like i said if we're being open and honest as long as you're trusting the process and you know that this person's worthy of your time then just trust what's happening in the moment have that back and forth trust what's going on not there's always points that in any recording in any album in any ep even just in a, when somebody comes in to do a single track where it doesn't feel like it's the greatest or it's not quite where you want it to be. Everybody has that moment of they just don't see it happening. You, you're you not exactly sure how you're going to get to that end goal, but you trust that you're going to hit that moment of the aha of, oh, yeah, this is great. Oh, I can hear it now. Oh, it's happening. There's always that great moment where you get the shivers and the, the goosebumps of, OK, this is good. I can see why. Let's do this. Let's keep going forward. And sometimes it doesn't come to the very end. So you're just getting done with that mastered process and you're sitting off the client like, wait till they hear this. Or you're in the room and you're getting that that last bit of it done. Sometimes it takes till that moment, till everything comes together, but just trust that the people that you've chosen, the people that you're paying or the people you're working with, trust in the process and you'll get a better result in the end. If you're just fighting it or if you're hitting that wall and having the doubt, just wash it away and trust what you're doing. Number four, focus on the, mo the emotion, not the perfection. And what I mean by that is really simple. There's so many people that really claim to this idea of, well, I'm a perfectionist. I need to do 30 takes because I just want the perfect take. And the perfect take is not the perfect length and the perfect notes because those things can be adjusted. They can be changed. They can be taken care of. Yes, you should get the best performance you can, but guess what? It's all about the performance. If you had the right emotion and you knew what you wrote about and you could put yourself in that mindset and really convey that across with, you know, what's coming out of you, how you're playing something or how you're singing something, that's far more important than the perfect take. 
if you got the emotion, if you got the feeling to come across, that's worth way more than the perfect notes at the perfect length for the per it just all that doesn't matter. Emotion, feeling, connection. That's what matters. If you can focus on that, I promise you, you're going to get so much more out of your next recording, out of your next session. Number five, the last one. And this one's really, it seems straightforward, but if you aren't mindful of this going in, I guarantee it's going to, what sinks the, it's going to be what sinks the ship going forward. So you need to be mindful and take care of yourself, both physically and mentally. And that just means having things around you. Like if you know yourself well enough to how your process works. Are you a morning person? Are you an afternoon? Then set up your sessions for that. Then know when you need a break. How long can you go in a day before you need some food and you start to crash or get hangry? Or is it caffeine that drives you and makes your brain work? And if you don't have that, you're not on that same level. Have ways to arrive in that perfect situation and to re-up during that session so that you can go as long as you can. And don't be afraid to set ahead of time like, hey, I need to have a break every three, four hours. Let's have a snack. I need some water. I need to get hydrated. I need caffeine because my brain stops working. I'm 100% straightforward with my clients. Like I need a break. I have to get some some caffeine in me or I'm going to have worse results. I'm going to start missing things because coffee beans fuel my brain and I don't know why. But everybody has their thing. And whatever that is for you, make sure you've built that in, that you're taking care of yourself physically and mentally. You know, take bathroom breaks when they're needed. Get up and walk around. I get times where eight, 10 hours, I'll be sitting in the chair doing the editing, doing the recording, and I'll forget that I need to get up, walk around, take a quick break, get some exercise, whatever it is to get your, your body and your brain to function at their, at their highest capacity. We only have so much time that we are effective as humans. It's just the truth. So be sure to work that into your routine. Take care of your brain. Take care of your body. And that's it. Five super quick, easy ways to get the most out of your next session. Either if you're paying somebody or if you're just working somebody, make sure you're getting the most out of it. This is how you're going to do it. I hope that really helps. If you have any questions or suggestions, always helpful. Put them in the comments. We love to pass those on, or we may make a future video off it whatever it takes. If you have taken the time, thank you so much. But if you haven't, give us a subscribe, give us a like, join our community, keep growing every day. I really appreciate you all. So until the next one, we'll see you then. Bye.